Hi, good morning, class. Can, can you hear my voice? Yes, doctor. Okay, okay, good. Uh, we will start the class as, at 11 o'clock. For the attendance, right? You, uh, you can record your own attendance later at 11 o'clock. I will give you the password to record your own attendance on Spectrum. So later at 11 o'clock, I will share the password. Hi, good morning class. Before we start the lecture, I want you to go to Spectrum to record your own attendance. This is the password given to you, so you can go to Spectrum now to record your attendance before we start the class. So uh, normally for every class that you attend, I will give you the password to record your attendance on Spectrum as a proof of your attendance. Okay, you can go to record it first before we start the class. Um, please try the password and let me know whether you, if you have done with the uh, to record the the attendance and the password is valid. Someone just respond to me in the chat to let me know that you have done with the uh, the attendance. Okay, good. Okay, for those who haven't recorded the attendance, please record it now before we start the class. For those who just joined the class for today's attendance, I already shared the password here. So please use this password to record your own attendance on Spectrum. Okay, thanks for the students who have responded to my, my uh, to, to the attendance. Okay, for those who haven't recorded attendance, this is today's password for the attendance. So record your own attendance using this password. Okay, so I assume everyone have done with the attendance. I will start the class now and I will also start the recording for today's class.
Okay, good morning class. Welcome back to the university. I think this is already the third day you have attended a few classes before before the web programming class. So this is today classes. So I will on my camera at least for those who have not seen me before. At least you can have a look at my face. Okay. So I think most of you I except for those that if let's say I interviewed you before when you are enter UN, maybe you have uh, you have seen me before, but for those students who have never seen me before, so this is, I just on the video for two days, at least you can see uh, who is the lecturer teaching you. Okay, so for before we start the lecture, I will first give you the course introductions for, for WIF 2003. So this is, I will start with the course pro forma. So this is the course, this is a web programming course three credit hours and total you will have 120 student learning time including the uh, all the teaching uh, all teaching and learning time assessment time in this course you need to achieve four we need to achieve four main learning outcomes at the end of the course you should be able to use different protocols languages techniques and tools for web programming apply the concepts and functions of client server architecture on the web you should know how to apply this and recognize some uh, the different quality issues in relation to web-based applications and how to build good quality soft, uh, web applications. And lastly, you should be able to implement an interactive website with regard to relevant quality issues, how you should uh, improve the usability aspects or how you should improve the security aspects in, of your system, for example. For this course, we will assess your soft skills in terms of critical thinking and problem solving skills, teamwork skills, professional ethics and moral. So these are some brief informations of the, for this course content. For the assessment, 50% go for continuous assessment. We will also have 50% final exam. But the final exam, I will replace it uh, to alternative assessments. Later, I will uh, let you know what are the alternative assessments to replace the uh, final exam. And normally, I will uh, announce all the grads through the true spectrum. So during the, uh, so later, I will show you in the current course information, what are the assessments. And you can also download a copy of the course pro forma and also current, uh, the current course information from Spectrum. So normally all the materials and resources I will share it on. Uh, I will share them on Spectrum, so you can download all the resources, the latest one. So for those if you are unfamiliar with Microsoft Teams, you can also uh, you can also uh, download a, a see what my guidelines how to use it. it. It will be good if you can download the software on your on your Windows because I will use this as a main platform to, to have our class. Now I will go through the course information for this semester. So the class will be conducted in, in English and these are some references that we will, uh, we will use in this course for, for the lecture notes and also for some exercises. Reference. For learning strategies, we will have live online lecture, we have live online lab, there are also some e-learning. So even we don't have online classes, I will share the materials on Spectrum so that you can do your own e-learning. So this is, the, we will have 38 hours face-to-face, -face, 8 hours non-face-to-face -face learning and 74 hours for your student preparation time. So at the end of this course, you should be able to pick up skills to develop web applications. So this is important, I, I need to emphasize again, because um, for you to build up how to build up a proper applications web programming class is actually quite important and it is also building your foundations for your FYP project. So I really hope you can put more effort to, to do in this course to pick up all the necessary skills that you need and the necessary understanding to design a good applications. Because this understanding also will help you if, if when you learn mobile, mobile applications development or this so this is considered the first, maybe it's your first course that you really integrate all your knowledge that you have learned in programming, you have learned in design, you have learned in database, put all need to be integrated together. 
in this course to build a proper applications with UI, connect to the database, and also you need, you need to know how to handle the request and response from the client side, from the users. So this is my name, uh, uh, Dr. Chang. If, if you have a chance at the end of this semester to come back to the faculty, this is my room uh, located at Block B, and this is my room number. My room is quite near to student center, but I'm not sure whether you have been to the faculty before or not since your batch started. I, I think you, have, you may have been here like for a few weeks before the COVID uh, and MCO. So you, uh, if you know the student center, my room is quite near to the student center. If you have a chance to come back to, when you have a chance to come back to the faculty, if you want to make any appointment with me to meet me in the room, this is my room number. At the moment, if you have any issues or requests or anything that you want to ask me, send me an email. So this is my email address. Please take note on, on this. We will have lecture Wednesday 11 to 1. And even when we have live classes, we will I will conduct it on Teams. For lab, we have two lab groups, group one and group two. So for group one, we will conduct it from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., group 2, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. So you need to join the lab sessions that you have selected. So all the live sessions will be conducted on Teams. So after after this class, I will create two, two sessions for, for the lab. So you join the sessions that you have registered. So don't click the wrong button. Click the right button to join the, the sessions on Friday. So we will start the lab uh, this week. For assessment, 50% continuous assessment, you will have one online test in week six and one the first project presentation in week eight. So the second presentations will be, will be conducted in the last week of this semester and you also need to submit a project report end of this semester. For uh, to replace the final exam, I will give you one individual assignment and later I will give you some briefing when I show uh, this is actually uh, I will uh, I will invite you to AWS Academic Foundations to go to uh, to have a, a, the e-learning on the cloud computing and also how to learn how to deploy the do some deployment on, on cloud. So this is something that later I will give you. Uh, more information when I uh, when I explain uh, the this either today or, or or during the lab sessions. So this is the 20%. If you can complete all the assessment on the AWS Academy platform and finish all the lab, then you can score 20%. So and you have to complete it by week 15 to in order to get this. If not, then I will. Uh, if let's say you can't finish all, then whatever that you, I will, I will give you the uh, assessment scheme later. Like let's say if you only finish half of it, then you will only get ten percent for the alternative assessment one. So this is related to AWS uh, cloud cloud uh, cloud computing. The second one, I will also have a online lab test for you uh, to answer some uh, to do some lab questions and. This is a practical practical lab test, so two hours to test to to test whether you really know how to do the web programming or not. So you still have a practical lab test for this course. There are fourteen weeks. So for the fourteen weeks, this for this week, I will start. Uh, I will not start the programming first. I will give you some uh, introductions to web development quality attributes and also cloud computing. So later I also will show you uh, what will be uh, covered in the AWS Academy Foundations and this will be also a part of your individual assignment. Um, on Friday we will have the lab one, but the lab one of course uh, we will, I will give you some uh, introductions uh, how to use the AWS Academy platform and, and also I will also uh, show you some installations of all the tools that uh, we will use in this course. So this is for, for lab one. So if you see when I put in the uh, here, right, if I put anything which is face to face, F to F, means that we will have face to face sessions on Teams. If it is non NF to F, uh, later I will show you, then that means it is supposed to be an e-learning. We won't have live classes. 
So starting from next week, we will start from HTML. And I also will announce uh, more information on your uh, project and assignments, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript. We also will learn the JavaScript and DOM. And week six, you, you, you see that I have highlighted all the assessment. So if, for example, in week six, you have an online test, two hours, and this test is non face to face. So you will do it outside of the we will have a lecture and lab and you I will give you a, a week time to answer the online test. This will be conducted on, on Spectrum. Week seven, we will start the server side development. And week eight, you will do the first project presentation. And uh, after that week nine, we will, we will continue the server side development. And next week 10, we will have uh, how to connect a web application to database and data, uh, uh, how to write, uh, how to connect to database server and also how to create the request to, to do the, uh, to how, how, how you can write the request to the database servers to ask for the data or to read data, create, create new tables, create new record, update the tables, all these we will learn in week 10. And because this is we will have public holiday on Friday. So the on, on for this week, week 10, right, we will have it as an e-learning. So I will share the teaching materials and some videos for to help you for this for uh, for these sessions. And we also will have online lab sessions, which is non-face-to-face. -face. So this is non-face-to-face e-learning class. And after week 10, we will have one week semester break. After the semester break, we will continue the server side development. And again, Friday, uh, Wednesday, uh, this, this class also will be conducted as e-learning because Wednesday, we also have the week Saturday public holiday. So you will uh, learn the lecture and lab again as e-learning. And we, when we come back to, uh, when we, uh, we uh, after week 11, week 12, until week 14, we will have live classes. So week 12 and week 13, uh, I will sh uh, we will focus on how to deploy the web applications and also cloud uh, deployment. So uh, uh, in case it, because since although we I, 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 I will go through I will go through the cloud foundations uh, courses with you because there are some lab sessions there in case there are some students that may not know how to or, or face some problem to use the AWS platform, then this is in these two lectures uh, and also lab sessions, we will go through uh, these together. OK, and last one, you will have the project presentation too, and you also need to submit the project report. Okay, so far, this is the current course information so you can also download from the spectrum. So before I start the lecture, do you have anything to ask regarding the uh, course pro forma and also current course information? Do you have anything to ask? If you have anything to ask, you can uh, type in chat or you can also raise your hands so that uh, you can on your mic uh, before you, uh, you can raise your hand and on your mic to, to ask the question. Anything that you want to ask? Nothing clear. So make sure you download it. Eh? Don't forget, especially the assessment part. Don't uh, you have to remember when do we have the assessment for for this course? Because this course basically is a busy course. You will learn a lot of new things together every week. You are learning something new. So make sure that you try to uh, keep up with the with the class. And whatever I teach actually is very basic. There are more to to learn, but uh, to build up your foundations for the web programming and also the ideas to design a proper application. So this is the, the course that you are, uh, I'm trying to give you uh, some foundations at least, give you some ideas how to start to uh, from the HTML until the uh, back end. Okay, so if you have nothing to ask, we will start today's lecture. Nothing right confirm, yeah? Because no one responding, so I'm also not sure. So you are still with me, right? Yes, Doctor. 
Okay, to make sure that everyone everyone is around, I, I, I will use this. Okay, go to the Padlet, go to this link. For those who are still around, still in my class, go to this link. Okay, I've asked you a, a question here. So I, I, before I start the class, I just want to know some background on your, on, on the students. Do you guys have any experience in work, web programming? If you have, then let me know what you have learned before. Like you know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then you say yes, HTML, CSS, PHP, anything that you know. If you don't know anything, you don't have any experience, you just put no. Okay? Yeah, you can reply, reply here or anything, any way that you like. If you if you have experience, then you let me know uh, what what you or have you you have learned before. So for those who are still around, you have to respond. At least I know how many students uh, have experience. How many students don't have experience? Okay. Who else seven response? If you are around. You should respond to my queries. If not, I, 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 I'm afraid that you, you, you will be missing in action. So respond to me. So I will use Palette to, to interact with you. At least we can see instantly who have responded to me. Who else have the response? Let me know because I want to know how's the background of this class. Because every, every semester I will get students from different backgrounds. Some already uh, expert. Some don't really know or some uh, knows the basic already. Okay. So who else have a response? Okay, so uh, let's, let me have a look. Okay, so far, if I those that response here, most of them is no, uh, except some have little experience in HTML, CSS, some have some basic idea of HTML, CSS, PHP. Yeah, but most of you uh, who reply here, uh, reply no. But if for those that who have a uh, uh, response here, most of you uh, is no, or they have some basic on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React.js, all this, okay? So that's good. Um, for those who respond here, I can see there is an expert here, someone who knows HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Bootstrap, React, MongoDB, Express. So basically, I think I, as I assume that these students, I'm not sure who is the student because since you put anonymous here, so I assume you will score, you should be able to score A very easily in this course. <laughs> Okay, so basically, I think most of you only have basic understanding. Just what uh, so far, I see one expert here. Some I already have some background in HTML, CSS, PHP. Okay, and or some learn very basic in school. Okay, that's good. But uh, in this course, you know that uh, we only learn HTML in one week. Then you will see also one week in CSS, one week one week in JavaScript. So you really have to pick up very fast. When I give you let exercises try to do it and practice it. If you not, you will lose track of this in this course. If you want to, uh, if you lost track, then you will find that you don't understand what I'm teaching. So I want uh, to for those if you only have basic, make sure that you uh, do the practice and also learn more at, on your own because I can't cover uh, a, a lot in this course. There are too many things to, to teach. So so I you really need to take your own initiative to learn more. Okay, we will start the first first lecture. So this lecture, I basically I want to give you some ideas on what do we mean by web development and what are the quality attributes or what kind of quality concerns with these systems. So for um, in this course, um, in this lecture, we will look at how the internet works, and I also will explain to you what do we mean by client-server model, which is very important for web applications. 
and the difference between the front end and back end. You may have uh, heard it before, what do, uh, but you may confuse what do we mean by front end? What do we mean by back end? Or what do we, front end is actually equivalent to what we call client side. Back end is actually equivalent to what we call server side, but you might feel confused now if you don't really understand the concept of client server model. And you also, uh, I, uh, I also will uh, explain to you what do we, uh, what is the roles of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for uh, web applications, and what do we mean by static websites and dynamic websites, and some introductions of web API. Because sometimes you, when you do web applications, you may want to crawl some data or uh, or retrieve some data from other websites, and normally they will provide you API to get the data from their website. And, and lastly, we also will look look at some of the uh, introduce you with some concept of quality. What quality aspects are important for web applications, and what are the design principles you can uh, have, uh, you can adopt, or you can apply to when you design and develop web applications. So first, we uh, before well, to for you to understand how web application works. Again, we will have uh, just a quick. Uh, I, this is something that you have learned in networking, but we just a quick refresh of your memory on how the internet works. So we will watch a video on this. See, if, uh, I will click a video just to to share with you. So this one, uh, it is the concept that you have learned. How the uh, the to shows you how the packet works from uh, if from the user side from travel to the server and go come back to your house again. So this is the things that you have learned in uh, you have learned before in networking, but just refresh you so that you when I introduce the client server concept, you you will understand what I, I mean again. Let's watch this together.
So this is to refresh your man memory on how the internet works starting from um, when the user send a request for a website and how the IP, uh, how, the, how the package were, uh, were, uh, were sent to the destinations and return you to the desti uh, to the to the client side with a web page. So you can uh, see this is actually something that you have learned in networking, but just to let uh, give you some uh, ideas on how the internet works and the client server concept is actually um, based on, on the how the internet works. So when we when we have a uh, when you request for for a web applications for a website, for example, uh, if you, if let's say now you want to go to you want to download a form or check the latest timetable on FSKTM. So what you will do? You will type in the the the, the address right of FSKTM. So for example, so let's say now, okay. So we come to this when we type this. We type this. We it will re eventually return us with the FSKTM website, and we can browse through. To get the information, for example, if you want to get the latest timetable, you will go to undergraduate and download the past timetable. So basically, this is a re request that you will send and it will be translated into the IP address 103.18.2.130. And the web server, once they receive the re uh, request from you or from me, they, they will go to figure out how to, they will look for this website which have reside from the uh, in the web server and builds the, the content to send me the, the home page of FSKTM. So normally this is the when we design the system uh, you will see that some of the website that you visit right normally their home page they will name it as index for example. So every time anyone requests for their website they will uh, you, we will have a what we call home page return to the users so you can see from uh, typical web applications we will have we will have some headings so so from the headings we will know what is this website about for example when i when we come to this website we know this is a website for faculty of computer science uh, and, and our our faculty is under university malaya and these are all the menu for us to uh, to go to other other pages in this website. So this is the home page with the with some of the uh, informations that they would like to share to any anyone who visit the website. Some informations related to our faculty. There are some highlights to show us what are the what upcoming events, what are the featured news, any updates that they will show it here. So you can see when you design a website. The obvious thing you will see that we will have a we will have a heading here. We will also have the bottom part what we call footer. The footer part will also again show some normally we will uh, we'll put the copyright statements and also maybe you will have some of the other quick links or some some information to allow the users to contact us. The middle part will be the main content of the website. And in this course you will learn how to design your website, the structure of your website using HTML, how you make it looks nice using CSS, how you make it looks, in, uh, how you make it interactive using JavaScript. So, so this is for the static part of the website. And for the dynamic part, we will learn the server side. OK, so when we come back, you can see from, from this website, it's actually a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So we, but um, for those if you already have background, so you should know that how we can actually apply these three to come up with a simple web applications web, web, web website. And when we, uh, if if you when you visit any website, because we already say a website is actually a combination of HTML, CSS, JavaScript for the UI side for the front end. If you right click your browser and we'll click view page source, you will be able to see some of the HTML code. You will know that, for example, you will see that they actually use the phones from Google and this retrieve from the Google APIs. So they use this. Uh, this is retrieved from the Google API for the phones. You can also see that they have 
the yeah, CSS files. So these are the CSS files that they uh, use in this website. And there are some other things, some other some other CSS scripts they put here. And you can also see some other uh, the, the navigations, the navigation links that you have seen just now in the header. So this is you, when you look at all these, these are all the HTML codes to help us to structure how we want to want the website to look like the, the, the structure of the part. The CSS decide what are the colors that we want to use to standard, standardize the look of our website. So this is just to uh, give you a quick look. And, and for some of the uh, dynamic part, they, they actually use some, uh, some of the JavaScript to, to run it. So for, for example, this is the JavaScript. And you see anything from open opening stack, uh, opening opening text with script and with slash script. This is JavaScript. So for the everything in the website for web applications, we always start from the heading for HTML and end with HTML. So we will decide what we will cover. Uh, with the uh, there are different HTML scripting uh, or how you define this uh, the heading the head of this the head uh, and what are the uh, navigation links they are different html text that you need to learn to structure the the website so this is just a quick look this is the one that i have uh, shown you just now the page source so for web applications one of the very important things that you must remember is the client server model. So this is uh, no matter what uh, applications that you use or later they are using some other the, the, uh, the concept, even uh, if they are using the serverless concept. But uh, basically you need to understand or remember when there is a request, we should respond to it as uh, from the server side or from the uh, from from the app servers or, or any uh, the back end side. We will receive when we receive any request from the user or from the client. We need to process it, respond to it. So client server model basically give you the basic idea of how a web application works. It all started from we have a website, for example, in uh, for just now we have look at FSKDN. When we when we open the browser, type this address. And it returns us with uh, it, this. We are actually submitting a request when we type this. If when I come here, click any link again, I'm submitting another request. So when I submit this request, you can see that they are running right. So when they are running, it means that they are processing your request. If the website is super fast, sometimes you don't even realize that it is processing. You may not even see this. If your internet, uh, if their server is fast enough or, or my internet is fast enough, sometimes like very quick, they already respond to you. So you may not even realize that they are responding. Like just now, uh, when I click it, you can feel that if they are processing, but you can see they are not loading the page very fast. So you can feel that they are actually processing the request at the server side. And then they, they know that I'm, ask, uh, I'm, I'm actually requesting for the staff intranet. I want to go to the staff intranet when I click the the link or when I click UN mail, I want to go to UN mail so they will process this and respond to me the website that I requested. So client basically is the from the user side like uh, when we uh, the users how the users send the request. So this one you already know we use browser. Okay, we use browser. For if you are asking for a, a website, then you will type the website address here. Then we can we can go to the website. So if you're already at this website, let's say now you want to look at the announcement that I made. When you click this, you are sending a request. You can see they are processing and they will return this announcement page with my announcements here. So this is the information that they shows you in the format of a table. So this is the client server model, anything that the client from the browser that we send a request, we have a back end, the server that we eat, which is invisible, hidden and invisible for us. It process our request, respond what we request to them. If it is not found, 
then they will also inform us that this page is uh, not found or the server is down. So web browsers, uh, just now I, I mentioned that we have different web browsers. So um, basically, I think I'm not sure what is the web browsers that you all normally use. No, oh, nah, just to make sure that you, you, you are still around, you can have a, you can respond here. I will add, just add one. Can you see that I have asked uh, questions here? So please re reply. You, you can reply uh, as a comments under under this. Okay, so just reply my, my uh, reply here. Don't need to create a new one. Just reply here and let me know what is your most favorite web browser that you are using. Okay, can you respond in the Padlet? It's easier that I, at least I can. Uh, we, uh, then we, we don't see so so many. <laughs> Response here. Okay. So we go to the palette and response. What is your uh, is it okay? Is it working? Okay, breath. I'm not sure, I, I didn't use this before. Do we have this breath browser? We have uh, Chrome, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, Google Chrome, Firefox. Okay, those who are using Safari, you are you a Mac users? Most probably you are Mac users. Macbook users, so maybe uh, that's why you are using it. I used to like Firefox, but after uh, when I started using Google Chrome, I switched to Google Chrome. And if I am I'm, I'm using my Macbook, then I, I will uh, I will use Safari. Or when I'm using my iPhone, then I also will use my Safari. So different web browsers, and when you do your web programming, right? When you design your UI, one thing is uh, you will sometimes you will see the effect is different. Especially uh, when you use Bootstrap or when you use some of the HTML uh, codes, you will find that the appearance will be a bit different. But basically, the web browsers will interpret our HTML markup markup together, the in, uh, together because normally sometimes we uh, in our web pages, we uh, like for example just now FSCADIM, right? We can see a lot of images that we have included in this website. Sometimes also we may embed video. We can have other assets. And all these are a grid of pixels for display, and different browsers they will uh, they will uh, combine all these all our elements together to show us to render the users a complete website how it looks. So you can see from uh, for web, from web browsers the browsers basically from a user when you open your uh, your internet web browsers you. Send, when you send a request, it is normally a get request to the server. If the server, uh, for example, you uh, you are uh, in this example, if you see the diagram, they are uh, the user is requesting vacation.html page. So the request sent to the web server. So the web server process it and render the website to the user. And again, the user for each of the resource. In HTML, that they will make if there is any additional request again, they will process that they will. Uh, so all these HTML page, the HTML markup language, the all the CSS files, they will retrieve all the pictures or video. They will combine together and shows you as a complete website. So this is how the 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 roles played by the web browser. They will interpret everything together from the uh, those sent from the web server, combine them together and shows you as a complete UI, web, uh, web UI to the users. So and now, just now uh, when, when I introduce the client server, you can you will always see that we will always have a, a what we call a web servers behind when we want to process or respond to the user's request. We need someone to work for us. 
when you write a web applications, you are not going to stay in front of these respond to the to the request. So we have the uh, web servers which will help us to handle all the HTTP requests. I think this one you should have uh, familiar with what we mean by HTTP when you learn networking. So I won't repeat the theory again. The main roles played by web server is it is a server that help us to re respond to all the HTTP requests sent from the client side. The client may be a machine and also can be a, a real user, a real human. So the, all the requests sent to the web server will be processed. And normally, if you are using a web server, it should be powerful enough to handle a lot of requests. If not, your website, let's say, if your server is don't have enough computing power, processing power, your website will down when it exceeds the capacity. So you can see that sometimes maybe, uh, for example, when I, if I when I give you ask you to submit or ask you to do online quiz, sometimes students will tell me that spectrum down. For example, if let's say hundred of you access spectrum together, there will be a, an issue that the web server may not respond to the HTTP request, and you will see that it will uh, after sometimes you might you might have the experience that the server is down. So that means that the server already handle uh, already reached the maximum capacity of the response request that the servers can handle or can process. So supposingly, if you know how many users you are going to have, you should increase the computing power of your web servers to handle all the requests. So this is what why I also introduced the cloud computing in this course, so that you again you will appreciate how actually we can design applications by applying the cloud computing concept as well. So this is also something that um, we are moving towards. So I also hope the students who are learning web programming also know what is web computer, what, what is cloud computing and how we can actually utilize all the uh, cloud resources to increase our processing power, uh, increase our capacity. Oh, these are di different things that actually the AWS, for example, the platforms like AWS, or Microsoft, they all have their cloud, their cloud platforms to support us with different uh, computing resources, database, all these things. Later, uh, I will give you the introduction for the cloud computing side. So you can see for web servers, right? Normally, in the web server, we will install an operating system. For example, like Linux or Windows, we also will have a web server applications or web server so software. Like for uh, normally, like for, uh, for open source, like for this course, we use Apache. If you are a Microsoft user, you, you some sometimes they will use IIS. But if they are using the .NET and Engine X, also another popular one for web server. For database, for open source, we have MySQL, MongoDB. We can uh, for for paid versions, we also have uh, like uh, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server. And normally, we also will install the scripting language for us to handle dynamic requests. And this dynamic request normally will be handled by a uh, backend scripting language like uh, PHP, SP.NET, Node.js. Um, there are many, many uh, different languages, web pro programming languages that can uh, you can learn to to handle the the server uh, the the uh, more dynamic request, which requires you to do a proper processing. So this um, in the web server normally what this is what we call stack application stack, and you will have uh, depends on what you are your your what is your need or sometimes depends on what your customer have requested you will build your web applications based on the stack that they requested or based on your experience. That uh, like for example uh, when you have a simple system you will use MySQL, but when your system becomes bigger you may go to Oracle, or sometimes you prefer to use rather than the structured database like MySQL, you want the non no SQL, you want to use no SQL, then you go for MongoDB. So this is also the co different combinations of application stack that we can use in web uh, web development. So this is to show you typically when we have uh, when we say if you look for jobs, sometimes you will see people say uh, they are looking for stack developer. They, when they are looking for stack developer, they assume that for, for, for web development, they are assuming that you know how to do the front end and also back end. And for the front end part, you should be familiar with the HTML, JavaScript, 
CSS. For the back end part, uh, what are uh, the operating system? What are the back end language that you know? Or app or web server database. So Stacks basically is the bundles of different softwares that com uh, comprise your website back end from operating system to the uh, uh, to the web server. What are the web servers software that you want to use? The programming frameworks, this and that. All these combined together, they becomes the the stack. So this is a uh, an example of generic web uh, development stacks. So normally in a in a dynamic website for a dynamic dynamic web applications, for the client side as usual, we have to give them an UI that will show them in the browser for, at the browser. They can see the UI and all the whatever things that they can we can do right. We will give them the functions or features that let's say now I go to Asia. Okay, so when I come to AAsia, so in the AAsia websites, when you come to the home page, we will notice that they also have different menus that allow us to. We can log in and, and once we log in and sign, uh, log in or sign up as a member, we can also do the booking, buy the purchase the air ticket. So a lot of things that you can do from this website. It is a dynamic. Well, this is what we mean the dynamic website. So you can see from the browser side when I see these web applications, I, there are a lot of buttons that I can click to to send the request. So when the HTTP server, the web server receive it, normally Apache is the one that will handle all the HTTP requests. So they will look at is the request is just a simple HTML file or graphic like for example the static website. Like if it is you are just requesting requesting for a web address, then they can immediately send you back the web page. If, for example, if let's say there are uh, there are some things that you request that require the dynamic re uh, request uh, it is a dynamic dynamic request that need to be processed by uh, languages like PHP. So we have, again we have app server like uh, for example if you are using PHP, they will they have PHP we have to send to PHP a script to do to run the script PHP it will have PHP scripts to request or interpret the request then sometimes maybe the request needs some information for example when i log in to aasia.com as come here the http web server will tell the will send my login information my username and password to the php to app server php so php will get my username and password First thing, what they are doing, they will check, am I the enter the right combinations or and user of username and password or not? So they to check whether I have entered the right username and password or not. They will go to database to retrieve to go to the data, uh, user tables to check whether this username and password exist or not. If exist, yes, this is a valid user. Database will respond to the uh, PHP scripts and say, okay, this is a valid user. This username and password is correct. Both are correct. Then PHP script will respond to HTTP server say, yes, it is correct. And also together with the login page. After login, we will see another page with our user. Normally, they will also will show, show, uh, show our username there. And we will, they will also store our username for the user sessions. So they will respond to the web server and the web server will respond and show us the page after we log in. So this is a basic concept of um, how the uh, every, what, how everything works behind the scenes. So normally for us is we just sit here, we just click log in. Then we just type. I, also type. I think I just do an, another one. But I, I, I'm not sure whether I, whether I still remember my Asia password or not. So for example, if I go to UN, mail, I sign in with Google. So from what we see is we are just clicking this and they are returning me with this um, because I already logged in. So they will log after I log in, they will show me all the, uh, the this page with all the emails. So this is to this is just uh, from our side. We are just seeing that we are just waiting. But actually, there are a lot of things. Like for example, all the emails that they store in the uh, database or in their uh, other resources server, they will return to 
to this to the PHP scripts to process and return the UI to to, to me. For stack, the most generic one, the most basic one people use is uh, they use Linux operating system, Apache as a web server, MySQL as a database, PHP. So all these is everything is open source. The uh, what we call LAN generic stack. There are also different kind combinations of stacks that you can use. For example, just now we also have one. Uh, I think one student say they uh, he he or she knows the Mon right the stack Mongo Express Mongo DB uh, Mongo DB as a database Express and React for the uh, React JS and uh, not JS so this is a different combinations of a uh, stack that you can uh, use for for your web development. Okay, so so far before uh, before I continue, do you have any questions to ask? For the previous things that I explained, anything else that anything you are not clear or you want to ask? No, right? Okay. Thanks for your reply, Li Hao. Okay. So I will uh, just give a quick then before I uh, later I will give you a five minutes break and then uh, before I continue the second part. Front end. So just now I have means I have uh, keep on uh, explaining to you. I hope by now you already know. Front end is what the user see. Front end is the client side, is the part of website that you see and interact it with. So whatever that you see, the, the one that return to, to you. So this is what we call front end. How you design, that you design, the, the, like for example, the Asia developer, they design how the logo looks like, how they want their navigation bar to look like, what is the what are the contents they want to show on their home page? So these are the structure that they design and the CSS with what the colors, the icon, how, how is the positions, everything they have defined. So this is what we mean by front end, what the user see. Back end is everything that happens before it gets to your browser. Means that when uh, they are in charge for to request the rest uh, to handle all the requests sent by the user. Anything back end, back end or server side means that it is hidden. It is something that you don't, don't know. So if you when we book a flight, so all the prices actually at the back end, right? When you're booking, you, you feel that you are just clicking a button. But when you click the button, they are actually at the back end side, they are checking the, the prices, they are checking your credit card information, they are charging your payment. They are booking, helping you to book the flight and reserve the ticket for you. So all this done at the back end, but for us is later only when we click the button, when they confirm it, they send us uh, the itinerary. This is what we see at our site. But back end, they actually do a lot of wonders. So it is sent as the, when you go to a restaurant to eat, when you order something from the menu, like let's say today, I feel like I want to eat a burger. I order. From from the grab applications, I order or I order from the sales uh, or from the from from the waiters. So I'm just sitting there to wait for them to serve me a burger. But whatever happened in the kitchen, I don't know. So this is a similar thing. Back end is like the kitchen that help us to cook the all the dishes and put everything together and give me the burger that I want. So this is just to show you uh, the concept of front end and back end. So uh, if you have learned, uh, you have learned the uh, UML use case description before, right? The front end side is more on the uh, the user. So when the user asks for a Reddit homepage, so the back end will uh, what the back end when the back end receive the request to return the homepage, they also will get the top post from the database and send the homepage content to you. So the browsers will render the home page with all the HTML, CSS, JavaScript they combine together and also the top posts that received from the database, from the Reddit database. And the, uh, so next, after we got the this, so for example, when I come to Reddit, so this is, I, I'll come to their home page. So this is the one that we that I already received from the server. So now I do and I send another request. I type this in the search box and submit the request.
So now this is uh, the search bar. And if I click cat and click enter, it returns the best results. The, the some of the uh, the unknown posts, they show me the best results with some of the posts. They also shows me what are the communities and users that I can join or follow. So this is, and you can see, if you click another thing, the car, you return another one. So you can see from the browser, right? I'm sending a request with a, they, they, you, they will show you, return you with another page with a return with a search result related to car. And this is actually a get request that I sent. So get for those if you have learned the uh, have uh, basic in PHP, you will understand what I mean by the get request. Okay, so this is uh, the the get request. That's why you can see the what are the what, what uh, the the request the key the search search uh, search terms that I use here. They they usually use use it. The attribute is Q equals to car. So the returns the results based on my the the keyword uh, the search terms that I use. So the what the what I I see is the the home page. But from the back end side, what they do is they will find all the posts related to cats, then sends back all the content related to cats to pack pack them together HTML CSS and JavaScript and send them back to me a search page. So the front end, so, so typically to build up the front end, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML, um, what we know it as a uh, hypertext markup language, but it is to help us to decide the structure of a web page. When we say structure, means that uh, it is like a mouse of a web page. We decide where we want to have the header. Where we want, uh, what are the uh, structure like? For example, in your when you do your work, uh, when you open the Microsoft Word, you will decide in the header what do uh, what are the contents that you want to have. So basically, we will structure that in this web page. I want to have a header. I also want to have a search bar. I want to have login button, sign up button, and this actually is is a HTML form for us to submit for user to submit the request. Then here we can see that they also uh, decide that there are three tabs. They have three tabs here. So this is the structure that they have defined for these web applications. So it is uh, the structure normally we use HTML to to decide the structure. And for for CSS cascading style sheets. So from the word style sheets means that how we want to decide the styles of HTML. They are like the adjectives of a web website. So styles means that how we want the, uh, your website to look like, for example, the colors. Normally, we will define a CSS file so that we can standardize all the page will have the same heading colors, have same footer color, all the font size will be the same. So that's the reason why we use CSS if you and, and also it's, it is easy for us to change like for example now we want to do the rebranding i don't want to use the times news roman anymore i want to use the area or i want to use another phone family i just need to change as my css settle everything so this is what we call adjective so the structure is just decide what we want to have like we want to have heading we want to have the body side which which we shows the content we also want to have a footer for this website, this and that. But to decide what is the background color, we normally will define it in the style shape. Like for example, in this website, their background, they use white as a as their background color for, for here. And for this, to display the search content, they have another background color here for this part. For this, for this part, they have uh, something like gray color. And for the button, they decide that sign up, they will use blue button, all the join button, they will use blue blue button. But for login, the background or the button background will be white color, but the phone will be blue color. So you can see this is what we call styles. You decide the colors, you decide how the button will look like. If you open different website, right, you can see actually different website. They will have different design. Their, their styles will be different, like for spectrum, 
this is uh, the, the design, their tables, how the table headings will have, will have this color. So this is all decided by our the, the web developers. Okay, so this is what we mean by the adjectives, how we decide the styles. And sometimes we also want to have some logics or interactivity to the page. So, uh, and this JavaScript, we not, uh, you don't need to go to the server side to do processing. We can also write some simple JavaScript to have some interactivity or help us to do something. They don't and don't need to go through the server side to, to do that for us. For example, maybe some of the website, they will give you some calculator to calculate something and uh, to help you to calculate some, some of the thing or the color will change when the, when, we, when the user clicks something or sometimes you can also retrieve something. So they are more like the verbs or actions of a web page. But this is still at the front end side. That means JavaScript we can uh, uh, initially will, will is introduced to focus on the front end. But later stage you can see that we actually can also use JavaScript for the back end already. But for, for front end, HTML, CSS and JavaScript, there are three scripting languages that you, you will use. Okay, so for uh, I will show you an example in, in the pop pen. So this is just to show you the, the different uh, content, uh, how it works. If you are new to HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then you can see this. So I will share the link here as well. Okay, so if you are very new, you need to understand the difference between HTML, CSS and JavaScript. As I mentioned just now, HTML, so this is how my website will look like. So this is the UI side. From the HTML, we decide the structure. So H1 means this is the heading and the size is one. One is heading, H1 is the largest heading. So we, I, have, I want to have a, 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 a heading sentence here. I want big text here, for example. So this is the opening text, H1, closing text. So this is the markup text for HTML. Anything, uh, when you write HTML, they are different taggings that you need to learn, different HTML elements with different text that you have to learn. So there are some popular ones that you, you normally you can memorize it easily. So when you see UL, they are unordered list. LI means this is the list item. So from here, from this one, if you are familiar with HTML, you will know that this will be a, a list and you will show as an unordered list with, with bullet points. By default, they will show as a bullet point. So we can see the content is here. So HTML normally will also include the contents that we want to static content. So in he heading one, the content that I want to display in my website. So these are the two items that I want to show. And I also want to have a button here make me a button here. So if I, this is to decide the structure and the content. So in this website, I want to have a heading, want to have a list and also a button. So this is what, I, what we mean by structure. CSS, decide the styles, the heading. So what is the colors for this? I decide I want to use purple color. The purple is my favorite color, for example, button. So for this button, I want to have a border. So you can see this, we can define the pixels. We want it to be a solid. You can also change it to dash. And what is the color of my border, border line? Background color, this is the, the codes of the color code. And this, the color here means the phone color. When we only put colors, right? That means this is a phone color. And I will use white as a phone color for this button. So these are the two things so we can see that when you define CSS, right, you have to tell me what is the elements that I want to add the styles. So if you want to add styles to H1, so the, there are different attributes that we can uh, we can do. We can also change the phone phone type. Okay. So this is uh this is to to show you like for example for button, then you have to put but the name of the elements here open curly bracket and close the curly bracket and what is the attribute that you want to change and what are the values okay so this is to show you the example css handle the style so if for if let's say i now i don't want it to look uh, to be purple color i can change the color here change to red okay it refresh 
and show me it is red color now. So for example, for button also, if let's say now I don't want the, the color, the background colors, it, uh, I, I want to change the background color to yellow. Then I put it here. We change to yellow and I want the phone color change to black. I can change it. Okay, so this is something. Let me check. I, I, I think it should be dash if I remember correctly. Is it correct? Yes. So I change the solid to dash. Then you now you can see the line, the border line become dash. Of course, you don't have to mem memorize every everything because you can. Uh, if you have seen what I share in the in the general part, there is a a few three schools, right? There are a lot of guidelines for us to. Uh, you don't have to memorize everything. Even if you want, uh, you can't remember all the. Uh, attributes this and that you can just google it like html for dash lines this and that okay so it is quite simple so you don't have to worry that you have to memorize everything but the simple one you can always remember uh, for example now unordered list right so if you want it to be ordered list then you can change it to ol and now it will show me as the ordered list means you give numbering to the list by default, it will be using 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you want, you have to define, if you want to become ABCD, of course you have to change it. Or sometimes we, we can also define, or uh, uh, we can also use like something like bootstrap, this and that, to, to uh, do some of our styling. So this will, we will also cover in this course how to use bootstrap template or bootstrap to uh, styling. So Bootstrap basically gives us uh, how to build a responsive site and good looking site with uh, the CSS, a lot of uh, examples of uh, the CSS. Okay, so, so there are a lot of things, uh, they, are, they already have a different kind of design, so they have combination of CSS and JavaScript and different components that we can use. So this one, uh, when we learn CSS, I, I will show you how to how you can apply it. So um, we will start from the basic HTML, CSS first, then only go into Bootstrap. So for JavaScript, you can see here, just now we have said that JavaScript basically will help us to, to have some interactivity or action. If you look at here, document means this is the, the website, or the web page. What is the document? The main elements, okay? So we want to query selector means that we want to select an element. So this one you will learn later. I, I just briefly tell you what they are doing. So query selector now the, the uh, we want to select the button. So normally we will put the name. Uh, so this is the, the button name. So we want to select the button on this web page to add an event listener. So what will happen is the event listener will listen to the user behavior or user actions. So if you look at here, now I've actually added a human or a, 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 a DOM, a JavaScript. Here is the DOM document. Uh, is there any students open the the your mic? Okay. So when we look at here, so it is actually telling me if let's say the user click the button, what is going to happen? If you look at this. It will tell you that the body body means that uh, the the this whole contents of the HTML content, the styles. We already say the styles is the objective, like including the color. So style dot background actually, it will change the color, the background color. When I click this button, it will change the background color of this document, this web page, and they use the random color function. So when I call the random color function, so this is the, the function that we write to randomly select the color for us. So this is an example of the, uh, the, the random color functions that we apply in this JavaScript. So now if I click the button, you can see that the color has changed to pink color. If I click it again, it will change to another random color. Okay, so normally you can see here actually what they try to do is they try to combine different a different combinations of the colors, color code using some uh, mathematics equations. So you again, you click again, it will change you. So this is 
an example to show you that when you design a web applications, we need to decide the structure. What are the con what it, how uh, what do we want to have? What are the HTML elements we want to have? We want to have heading. We want to have list. We want to have button. We want to have a form to to for to allow user to send the request. All these we decide in HTML. How we want the website to look like, we use CSS to include some interactivity to provide some uh, some simple simple things without uh, this, uh, with, uh, actually normally uh, we, this is this don't need to go through the back end so the JavaScript can give you give you something like the actions or verbs so this is to show you a quick look at how it works and you can also play around if you are very new you can play around with this website just to uh, play around to have a few set of to truly understand the different roles played by the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Although HTML also can decide the color, this and that, but normally we'll make the HTML code plan just to focus on the structure and contents, and we will stick to CSS to decide the styles. We will centralize at all the styles in the style sheet CSS. So it is easier for us. Now we want to change the design of our website. We want to change the theme color. Very easy for us to change at the CSS side. We don't have to change at the web page one by one. So this is the reason why we use the CSS. Anything you want to ask before I, I before I continue? Anything you, you want to ask? Is it clear for, for you the concept of the front end concept HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you must make sure that you truly understand. So when you learn uh, you can pick up quite fast. OK, so uh, I will give you a do you want a break for five minutes? Because I give the class. Yes, the CSS styles will be applied for every HTML page. So normally we will have a centralized CSS file. So just now when I say when I open the let's say the FSKDN, right, you can see that they actually Three CSS file that they use, but we uh, you can see this is the CSS file. They they actually apply some bootstrap. Uh, they have a uh, CSS. So this is the CSS file that they use to standardize. So later, if they want to change anything, of course this is the uh, reside in their web server, so we cannot make any changes to the CSS. But we will know what others, what they have used it. Like for Google, for the phones, they use the Google API. The, so you can see, it is easier when you put all the styles in the same sheet. If now you uh, FSKDM want to change the design, we can change it easily. If you put the the styles in all the in uh, under HTML, right? You have to come here to change every single page and you can you imagine how many. This is just a simple website, no fair FSKDN one. I have this. I, I don't know how many pages we have, just the static pages, you know. <laughs> I click here again. You now I want to change the color for every page, you will go crazy if you don't use CSS. Like for example, even how many pages I do, I, I also don't know how many pages they have, you know. This is just a simple faculty website. Can you imagine if you are a developer, you have to change every single website, you will go crazy. <laughs> you are not going to do that. You will have a centralized file to standardize all the colors and everything will look the same. OK, so do you guys want a five minutes break before I continue? You all want five minutes break? OK, so I will start the counter now for five minutes break. So we'll take a break. You can have the a break. Go to the toilet, this and that. Huh? OK, I will.
class, we will continue the the lecture. So are you are you back? Someone please respond here if you are online. If you are still with me. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for responding to me. And now I will continue so that we can finish at one o'clock and you can go to go for your lunch. So uh, front end, I, I believe that you should be very clear now. Huh? Front end only handle the UI side for the users, but we render and show to the user. At the back end, when people send the request to us, for the back end, we normally for, for us to process the request from client or from user, client side. We, the typical setup for back end, you must have a web server, of course, for us to get the, to receive the HTTP request from the internet, from the browser. We, for us to, we normally, we also, for dynamic website, you also need to have application server so that you can run your PHP scripts. For example, if you are using PHP, then you have to run your PHP script so you also have the app server. You will also have, again, if you store, if you are a dynamic website, you also need to store the data, right? For example, for our uh, student registration system, we need to store all the use, uh, the students' information, the courses that you registered. So we need a database to handle this. We will separate the functions. Web server handle the HTTP request. Application server run the, uh, then pass the, if any request, uh, Required processing, uh, it is a dynamic request. That server will pass to application server. When the application process the request and found that the script running and found that they need to retrieve something from database or create a new record to database, it will connect to the database server. So this is normally what we need to set up from that end. They will work together. Like for example, in the AHA system, they will when we search for a flux to Put up the web page, they will go to their database to search what are the available flights, then send it back to us. So the back end depends on the system functionality, can be very simple and also can be very complicated. For example, for a basic search function, it is quite simple. User enter the search term. Thing and search all their content from the database and send it back. It is a very simple function at the back end, but it can also be very complicated. These are some of the features that you're already familiar to sign up with the back end features that uh, require some dynamic processing of by the back end script. When we create a new user account, when we add a new post, all these need to all this we will require some further processing and also normally we will store these informations in the database. So these are some potential backend features. So normally after we've done everything, the backend will, uh, will combine all the contents or informations that we want to respond to the user together with from the data collect uh, retrieve from database, what how we want the to present the data to the user, the combinations of HTML, CSS and JavaScript will send to the client side. Normally all this front end we already designed but we'll just put in the dynamic content. Okay, so for in web applications of course we will start from developing static website which teach you how to do the basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, how to use bootstrap. So we will start from, from static website then we will move into dynamic website. So the static website means that it does not change in response to the user input. That means it won't uh, require a lot of uh, any any uh, scripting further further processing by the PHP scripts or anything. It just show the static contents. So for dynamic website, the contents the changes will change based on the parameters that are sent to the web applications by the web browser. For example, when we log into the system, actually for different users, they will create uh, sessions for the user and also uh, they will also have a dynamic content for this particular user. So let's say when you log into Facebook, your Facebook homepage will be different from my Facebook homepage because we have different friend lists. We also have different posts from our friends. So the contents will be different, although we all you are using Facebook. So this is what we mean by dynamic. 
So how about how do you, you know how to differentiate, right? So for our faculty web website, this is static or dynamic? So dynamic. Faculty, huh? Dynamic. Uh, uh, this part is dynamic. Static. And this is more mostly aesthetic. I I accept if you go into like for example, uh, if I'm going to and and the, uh, this is in our website basically they only give you information so everything is static they upload and show you. So this is more like a static website. They shows you the media, show you all the images. But if we go to uh, hold on. A, uh, like let's say Asia, they have static contents, but they have a lot of dynamic features as well. It's okay. Okay, so we can see when we search the flights. Okay, so this is something like if I'm going to Sama. is bad time for me to search for anything. Seems that we cannot go any place now. Let us change to Lazada. Remember when we go to Lazada, so you can see bef before you log in, they are con con the, the content is most mostly static side. So they show you all the catalog. But after you log in, you can add your your uh, add the things that you want to buy to the shopping cart. They can they will store in the database after you log in. If before you log in, normally the, the content is static. So after you close the browser, when you come back again, it won't be there anymore normally. If after you log in, they, you, uh, you log out and log in and you come back, you, you know that the content will still keep for you, like those things that you in your shopping carts is still there. It's because they store in, your, uh, in the database already for this particular user. So that's what we mean by the change. It will change according to the uh, different users, the different parameters. Another thing also, I think you all always heard about API, right? Application programming interface. So basically, there are different uh, web applications. They may uh, uh, give you some API, what they call application pro programming interface. When you learn modeling also, I think they also teach you, or, or when you learn the data structure, I think you have heard about the concept of interface, right? API is to protect our applications from the attack normally. Sometimes um, other applications want to talk to our applications or web application, for example. To avoid them uh, re uh, access our features or functionality directly or give any attacks, normally we will give them some sort of like interface that only allow them to talk to us. They will, uh, they will, this will this interface will give a lot us to they will give us some something like API uh, show give you some API codes or uh, normally you when you when you ask, when let's say you have a web applications you want to use the FB login they will give you something like on uh, their API that you can use their API to talk to the Facebook to get the login informations so that you can uh, allow your user to log in using Facebook for example. So this, they will give you an interface, then they will pass the data back to you, but they won't allow you to directly connect to their, uh, directly uh, do use any functions that they have in the Facebook. They give you interface, then they just give you back the data. So normally with API, uh, we make an HTTP request to this API, the interface, to get some data back. So for example, this is, uh, if let's say this is for iTunes, when I click here, now I'm calling the iTunes API and uh, with the searching for something related to Harry Potter. So when I click, uh, when I click, it returns the, the API give me the data that I want. So I store it in the website. So if, if this is another one, the code, let's say I search iTunes with another one. So this is another file. So there are two sets of data that I have retrieved from iTunes. So I search Harry Potter movies and I also search for podcasts about the code. So this is the, 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 the part that I, uh, this is one of the example 
of HTTP request that I go to their API to retrieve some links. So just now, if I open this file using my Notepad++, plus plus, you can see that they give me the data that I want, how many uh, result count, and, and you can see they return me the data related to the uh, to the Harry Potter movies, and they give me informations like uh, what is the track price, the rental price, co collection HD price, release dates for this particular movie. So they also give me some uh, the descriptions of the movie, for example. So this is the data that they send it back to me, and you will see the format. This is if do you recognize this format? They only send the data to, to me. Normally, when we call API, we're expecting them to send us data, and the data will be written to us. Using the data formats will be in XML or JSON. Okay, so keep in mind when we talk to an API of another server, another applications, we, we request for data, not structure. So they the, uh, they only give us return us with the data that we request for. So normally they have, will use data simpler data formats uh, for, to, for us to, to retrieve the data. If it is if they return you using XML, so you will see it is this is how XML looks like. So for example, uh, we have an object person and these are the attributes and this is the values that are written to me the data that I want. And if they are showing in using the JSON JavaScript object notations, you will see that uh, for this particular record, I have a person record, uh, 21 years old, the name Travis, and city is LA. If you look at here, so this is in what format? I think Steve me what in, in what format? You you can see this is uh, this is. XML or JSON? Yeah, this is a JSON. If XML, it will look like this. Okay, so this is JSON. And normally, no matter what data you give it to, even if you later, if you are writing your own, app, uh, you have your API server, you also want to uh, send back the data to, to your users, right? The user request, right? The HTTP request. You also need to learn. Normally, we should have the name of the attribute. And this is will be the values. This is similar to how you do the object oriented. But so, for example, they we know the result count. What is the meaning of this data? If you didn't put the attributes and values properly, the combination of key and value, then people don't know what you are returning. Like for example, the collection ID. So this is we know these numbers. This data is the collection ID. So this is how we write the JSON or XML when we give people the, any data through API. Okay. So for uh, these are some there are some differences for between these two, these two scripting. So for XML, so basically if you are using XML, you have to be uh, this have to be passed with an XML parser. And you also need to use XML DOM to look through the document when you when you extract the values. So normally, when you receive it right, if you have an applications to call any API, you your site your head PHP script, you will also write something to to know how to pass the uh, the informations to extract the values that you want. So you need to identify what are the key that you are looking for. Okay, so normally you can see in XML everything also we have the closing tag and opening tag and also closing tag. Opening bracket, close bracket. So same thing for this one. Uh, when we have this, uh, the, uh, they are actually see, uh, it's a standard JavaScript formatting. So sometimes people prefer this is because it is uh, everything is stored as a string. You, you will see here, although the data is very long, but believe it or not, it is just a string, one string. So it can others. Uh, uh, it is faster to search, shorter, quicker to read and search. Or uh, you can also use it for uh, as arrays, very fast. So sometimes for AJAX applications, they will use this because it is faster and easier than XML. So there are differences. Uh, I mean, at least you you should uh, know the, the 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 difference. Okay. So basically, to learn this course, the good thing is when if you really 
uh, pick up the the um, all the skills that you have learned in the, uh, all the scriptings, the basic scriptings, then you further improve yourself in the web development. There are different roles or different jobs that you can find. You can become web developer, the software engineer, UI. If you prefer front end, you can become UI designer. If you uh, or front end developer, you can if you are good in all, all the concepts, you can also be a tester, quality assurance. You can also be sys admin to write uh, to to develop system for the admin side. So far, the administration side there are uh, there are a lot of back end thing to handle. If you love database, you can also be database administrator or security specialist. Anything hosted online need a lot of security features to avoid the website being attacked. So it is a lot of job prospect if you are taking this web development course seriously, build up a good foundation, then learn more and more. There are a lot of things that can be learned in web development. This course is just give you some foundation, very basic thing. You have to improve yourself uh, more and more uh, after after this course. So these are different types of company, web development company uh, 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 available in the market. There are startup company that uh, help people to develop system. There are also hosting company that provide the environment, the web server for people to host their website. We can uh, for some companies like UM, we also have our internal web development team to build up some internal web applications for to support our university uh, from, uh, some some to run some operations for our university. There are also some design company speci specifically help to design the UI of web applications. This company companies that have different but like different they are considered give different they give you web server they also give you a, a different kind of computing resources different services so all in okay so uh, after you have uh, know the basis of web development another things that uh, I want to emphasize is the quality aspects of your system when you build a system you develop your, fun your, your UI very nice UI you write your scripts, but one thing is, how is the quality of your system? So for uh, for web applications, of course, um, there are a lot of challenges. Yeah, for web-based system, we know that there are a lot of new and unique challenges due to different factors. For example, changes in the economics. So uh, one thing we can see from here, uh, ever since we have uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, the web applications demand becomes higher. For example, uh, for e-learning, the e-learning system need to be uh, more advanced. And we also, last time we, I don't really explore tools like Microsoft Teams, this and that, but ever since the pandemic, we have to conduct class live. So we have to learn how to use Zoom, how to use Teams, how to use Google Meet, all these to conduct our classes. So you can see, uh, since people won't go out shopping so much, there are changes in economy and we need to have uh, web applications that can support this. So you can see um, because of all the changes in the economy, so users, um, but of course it is also competitive. There are a lot of people have different kind of website, even for online shopping. We have Lazada, we have Shopee and a, a lot more. So the customer will only give visit your website or Come go go to, you use your web application again if they really happy satisfied with your system. So quality is important. So a new company also will they if they let's say uh, when a new company comes out they put out a better a com more competitive website with better quality then the customer also will be happy and switch to the new website. Another thing also another fact main factor is changes in technology. We can see that when the demand of the applications and then more and more users that when we switch from uh, working from home, now everything now, now I we instead of face to face having class face to face, I teach class online, and we have to change the uh, the changes in technology is uh, we have high demand in the online classes, so we can't we need a more stable system to have live classes for example, and all the talks everything will be webinar all these. 
and a lot of functionality because of the increased number of users and also uh, since we have to reduce the Facebook face interaction, more features need to be integrated or added to your system. So you can see the increasing complex software integration at different kind of things that we need to go on. So the technologies also keep changing. Now we can heard, we will heard about cloud computing, IoT, blockchain, all, all sorts of things, data science, data mining, all these things. So your web applications to give recommendation, to give all these things, also need to cover the complex aspect of the software. For us to make sure that we will continue satisfied with the user, there are some quality aspects that you have to uh, keep in mind. So these are some of the main quality attributes that you make sure that you, you should, we should um, consider it when we use the system. If not, we will be unsatisfied. Like for example, yesterday when I have class with a final year student, I asked them what is the system that you, uh, web applications that they have, you have used recently that you really don't like. So for now I ask you the same question again. So now if you name one or two system that you, you have, you have used it before. Okay, so we can we go back to palette. Now I add a new topic. So I have posted a, a, a new questions here. You can add, okay? So what what uh, now uh, when I'm asking this question, of course, you besides my uh, yesterday again I asked your seniors, I received a lot Maya. A, a lot of things, a lot of them told me Maya is the worst. So besides Maya, what else you you have a spectral Maya? You can see the user experience, right? Why? Can you tell me why you don't like Maya? You some someone also type here why you don't like Maya. You 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 tell me uh there are certain quality things that makes you unhappy, right? So what is the things that make you feel what is the quality? What do you face when you use Maya? So what is the problem? That why you keep saying that you don't like it? <laughs> Crashing. Slow loading. What else? What are what are the other issues? Slow navigation cannot open in new new tab. And four zero four. Let reply to inquiries, response, right? All these. Don't update the info when registering. Okay. Okay, so now I come back to quality. When you complain about Maya, what happened to Maya? Is it reliable? So when we say reliable, that means that even uh, if there is any failures of the system, it should feel safe. That means that it, it will uh, still, you can recover very fast, but I don't know how long if you, when you cannot access to Maya or Spectrum, sometimes you will feel that it is unreliable, right? Because you may have to wait more than one hour in order to use it again or, or sometimes you, you lost your patience already. So reliability is important. Usability, do you, let me see anyone have talked about usability or not. Is it easy to use? Because so far, I think you all talk about crashing, slow loading, cannot open, uh, more related to reliability and performance. But is it easy for you to use the system, Maya? Is it e easy to use? Because so far, nobody talk about uh, usability. For for the uh, you, lecturer's functions, like, there are some functions that I really don't, don't like. It is different from the previous system that we use uh, for, for, for example, the marks entry. The system, uh, they are a bit troublesome in terms of usability. Some of the steps, they required me to do more steps co as compared to the previous system that I used for uh, Mark Sentry, for example. 
security security aspect um so far it is important to secure all the information all our data i think last year is it last year or the year before um systems was hacked right by by uh, maybe by students and all our data was disclosed to the public so security is important but anything hosted online right we must make sure security is important performance just now i think most of you complain about the uh, response slow loading everything slow uh, very slow cannot open all this is considered performance the response time so user will be unhappy unsatisfied availability it should always be accessible when required i think this one also a lot of you complain it is not accessible sometimes scalability when the you are we is it able to handle a growing amount of work so we can see from Maya, it is a, a very good example to show us that it is not scalable enough, but a lot of users want to sign up together. Maintainability, how easy the system can be maintained, I, I'm not sure because I'm not the developer. Time to market is also another important thing because the technology moving very fast. Like for example, just uh, when we started the, uh, the pandemic, a lot of people have to improve their system very fast. Then should send to the market so that they won't lose the competitions in the market when everyone mco stay at home purchase everything online so sometimes you have to meet the time to market when certain spatial situation happen for accessibility for web applications or mobile applications one of the thing is we also have to concern about people who are using it so accessibility also important for especially for people with this ability the power of the web is it is in its universality assessed by everyone regardless of this ability. So we should improve the accessibility of our website to benefit people with physical disability, slow internet connection, or using outdated computer or mobile phone. So there are some guidelines that you can uh, go, you can click the website to look at more details about the principle. So for accessibility, it should be content should be perceivable easy for people to uh, to uh, uh, the, uh, in terms of content operable so all the interface must be auto or, or operable understandable must be robust this for security anything hosted online internet as mentions we must apply security principles confidentiality everything must be confidential for example even we store the password or any confidential data in the database, we should hash the data or uh, protect the data. Integrity, we, uh, integrity, availability, all these are three main security principles. We must make sure that only the authorized user can access it. So these are uh, some uh, the, the impacts when we apply uh, of the security principles. We, if we uh, if we lost uh, a loss of availability, actually will prevent user to assess some of the system. If we lost confidentiality, we will, uh, the user data will be uh, will be disclosed to others. So it is important to make sure it is secure. So if we lost integrity, that means any uh, changes of, the, of your data pre uh, prevents you from having correct data. So all these are important principles that we should make sure that our website is not vulnerable. It's, it is not something that can be can be injected or attacked by people easily. So these are some of the things that people are trying to, a lot of times that people try to hack your system. So you make sure that when you develop a web application, no matter it is, even if it is just a simple system, you should always make sure that there are some security principles or security techniques that you, uh, you, you, you have uh, implemented in your system to secure your users, secure the data, secure the access. Okay, so this is some of the things that you can look at. There are different things we can do from face to face to improve the security aspect. Okay, so lastly, just so this is a uh, introduction for this course. So basically, I really give you some basic idea about front end back end. Next week we will start the coding already for the uh, cloud uh, for the AWS Academy platform, right? During the lab sessions, I will show you the, the introductions to cloud computing and how to how you will assess the AWS platform. So but today, either today or tomorrow, I will send you requests 
to create account for to invite you to the NWS Academy portal. So when you receive it, right, you have to uh, click my invitations. I will send to your Siswa mail. So you need to check your Siswa mail. So please take note. So for uh, this is uh, for you students, you will have to uh, the class. I will invite you to uh, you, you after you receive my invitations. Please create an account in NWS Academy platform so that you can access the 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 course that I created. So I later I will create a course for for this for my web programming group. In this course, for the individual assignment, you have to complete this online cloud computing cloud foundation course so that you will be able to. So the cloud foundation course will allow you to assess. There are 10 modules to give you introductions to cloud. There are uh, every module will give you a more knowledge check. So for as an individual assignment, I want you to complete all the knowledge check. And of course, if you have uh, if you OK, so this uh, I will give more information about the AWS economic platform and give you a quick uh, introduction on cloud computing during the lab sessions and also need to show you how, how you use the uh, cloud platform. And also there are some lab sessions and uh, lab, uh, lab exercises here, so you have uh, you have it until week 15 to complete the the uh, knowledge check. The knowledge check can you can keep repeating until you achieve at least 80 percent. The lab also same. There are six labs in for for this uh, you, uh, to show you with very good guidelines to show you step by step how you can use AWS platform. When you click the lab, they will have sandbox to give you experience. So after you are uh, comfortable, you can create your own free free tier account in AWS. So if you when you want to uh, explore this AWS academic platform also give you the sandbox environment for you to click it. Then when you uh, come to the sandbox, uh, so this one uh, because this is the, the course that I created, so like you can't see the. So this one I uh, during the lab sessions, I will show you uh, the tools that we are going to use in this course, I will show you some installation and ask you to install some of the tools for this course and, uh, and also do some demos for uh, show quickly shows you how to use the plat academic platform. And I also will give you some credits in AWS Educate for you to explore the, uh, the cloud platform under AWS. OK, so the more details I will, I will explain to you. Uh, I will explain to you in uh, later. Uh, in during the lab sessions. So this is for the lab one. We will uh, we will focus on installations and how to uh, use the AWS. So when you receive my invitation, so please, uh, it will be good if you uh, accept my invitations and create the account before the lab sessions, if, if possible. I will send the invitations uh, today, today or tomorrow before the before Friday. I, I will send the invitations to all of you. So when you receive the invitations, they will ask you to create account, ask you to join the class because uh, since it, since you don't have any account in the AWS Academy portal yet. So when you receive the invitation to my class, they will ask from you to create uh, a new user account first. So so this is uh, the uh, uh, during the lab sessions, I will go through more details how you can uh, utilize the resources here to get yourself familiar with the cloud. Uh, but this is the cloud computing platform supported by AWS. So this is the teaching website, the teaching platform they have with the videos to give you uh, the understandings on cloud computing. So this one, I will give you the introductions during the lab sessions and do uh, go through the, the platform with you. And also, uh, and again, uh, during the lab sessions, uh, I will tell you uh, how to, uh, what are the tools that you need to install. For, for this course. So for the cloud, uh, you, um, if you are interested in uh, this is this is the part that you can uh, learn at your own um, and you have until week 15 to complete this. OK, so the uh, uh, I will share more with you um, in, in this and, and at the end, actually, you can also claim a badge. And, and link to your LinkedIn and, and, and for your badge, right? I have a collaboration with MDEC. So if you have completed this online course for under the web programming, you will get another certificate from MDEC as well. 
So this one I will explain more on during the lab session. So I hope all of you can attend the web sessions on, on Friday and to get more information about uh, this AWS Cloud Computing uh, Foundation course. Okay. So before, before I, I end the class, uh, is there anything that you want to ask before I end the class? Anything that you, you want to ask or clarify or wants me to explain more during the uh, lab sessions? Uh, I have a question. Mm, okay. Uh, I wanted to know uh, which languages we'll be using uh, uh, in our coding. For back end? Uh, for, for back end? Yeah. Okay, I, I plan to use uh, PHP because um, one of the reason is uh, actually I was considering to switch to not JS or we, uh, for PHP. I'm thinking that whether we should use the framework or not. But uh, during the lab sessions also, I want to see whether all of you have any computer, uh, your laptop can support framework or not. If not, then we, I will just teach you the basic PHP because I've experienced that I, I taught not JS. And a lot, then there are some students that they can't install the Express, uh, they can't install the Node.js server, the app server, and also Express on their laptop. And at the end, uh, they um, they can't complete the assignments. But if I, we are just using the basic PHP with Zen, just install Zen with the PHP, my SQL, Apache, normally students don't have problem. Their laptop can support the basic one. Okay, but if I'm just teaching you the basic one, that means that you, you yourself can explore more on the, because for PHP, it's either I teach you the basic PHP or if your laptop is strong enough, then we can use some, apply some framework. But I'm really afraid some students, their laptop it cannot support or can, cannot support that. So uh, I think during the lab sessions, I will uh, I will check, I will check whether you, but at least I think all of you should be able to install them shouldn't be have any problem to use the basic PHP, but to use framework or not, uh, th this one I need to confirm whether all the students have uh, their laptop can support or not. Okay. Thank you. No, uh, anything else? So if not, nothing else, okay, what are the different okay, web page website is the same thing. The website, one web well, normally we will say website. I come to this website and every and when you navigate to from one to another, everything this is considered one page. When I click here, I go to another page. So when you have a website, you will consist of many web pages. Web app, uh, web app, the overall everything is applications. When people are using this, uh, this system like this is a shopping applications. We we use it. Uh, there's a, a normally we call it as a applications because we can do something on it. So that's why we say we say this is an application. We, when we say web application, that means that that this system provide us the features that can uh, allow us to do something. So we that's why sometimes uh, we will say that we we say web applications because we can have uh, different functionalities to help us like shopping website will give us a chance. The applications of the shopping website is what to uh, uh, support us to do the online shopping, to purchase things online, right? The seller can sell things online, customer can uh, uh, can purchase things online, and Lazada, for example, Lazada is a centralized like uh, a platform to allow all the sellers and different sellers to sell things there. Okay, so when we say website, basically when you have a this all these are website. So in a website, we can have very different web pages. When I click in, I go to another web page. So we call it pages because sometimes it looks like how, how you read books. Like. When you read books, you flip to a book, right? We call it page, right? You flip page, right? Page. So this is something um, sometimes in, 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 when you talk about when we talk about web, they also consider all this as a document. So sometimes you will see you know, some of the tagging or the language that we use, we put document, doc, style, something like that document doc something so this is how they when they do the design of the scripting language they consider they apply some some concept so every page we consider that this page they will uh, is focusing on showing us the informations of this product the product information and i can add to cart or i can click buy now to to purchase this product in lazada so when i go to home page 
this is the give us give introduce me to to Lazada with some catalogs of the products that Lazada is selling. So this is just to uh, the how 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 the uh, a very quick explanations of how I can tell you what do we mean by web page website and web app. Yeah, in uh, they are actually referring to the same thing, but just the uh, the terms will give you different uh, impressions on different things on, on this website. Okay, so I think we it's already one p.m. You can go for lunch. You may also have other class. If you have questions out of class, yeah, uh, you can just Zachary, yeah, Zachary, send me an email. And uh, if you want to send me message in chat, but sometimes I may not check the chat. So, but if if you want me to store everything, uh, some something like uh, if if let's say you want to uh, ask, just you are not uh, if you want to ask me something formal, it's better to send me email. Then when I'm free, I will reply you. But sometimes some students also will send me using the chat. So it's up to you. We can call it the applications if they are have. Normally, we will only save the application if it is a dynamic website. A dynamic uh, web website because they give us the uh, applications right. We, they give us a lot of functions to do this and that. And user can uh, can uh, the parameters. Normally we will only call it as applications. It, it is dynamic. Normally lah, we won't simply say like like if let's say I show you FSKTM website, we won't say this is a web application lah because it only give us the informations, anything information for the course for the program this and that. So we normally won't call it a web application, but we will say Lazada is a shopping web application because they give us functions to purchase, to sell things, we can make payment, this and that. So normally dynamic one, we will prefer to call it as an application when they really give us dynamic, dynamic website and also give us a lot of functionalities. Okay, so I will end the class now because I know some of you already hungry so you also have class later so i will stop the recording first take care and stay safe uh, friday we will have lab sessions then i will go through the cloud computing part with you all, how to use the aws academic platform and what uh, are the uh, and i also want you to install some tools for this course at least make sure that you can install them okay at least then uh, for the back end side and because then we'll help you to install straight away install the web server apache php and database okay so this one i want to make sure all the students install from the beginning the last time i asked you all to uh, visual studio code also we will use it so if you already have visual studio code or not Plaza, then you don't have an issue okay uh, we will end the class now take care stay safe i hope i don't know i hope this semester if we have a chance maybe end of semester we can have face-to-face -face interaction. If not, then maybe during your final year, hopefully I can see you all because I never have a chance to really know your batch. Okay, bye. Maybe during lab sessions, we can have some introduction. You can introduce yourself to me. Okay, but we have so many students, so I can't do it during the lecture. Take care, stay safe, bye.